So what are the top skills of 2023? The top skill of every year is always the ability to identify and deliver ROI with data. If you want to get into consulting, this is more important than any individual technical skill you can possess. Now, mm -hmm. don't worry, we'll get into the technical skills in a second. You still need SQL. <laughs> but how do you do this, right? How do you deliver ROI with data? This is me boiling my methodology down into the most succinct thing I can, okay? You work back backwards from the business problem to the tech and the approach you're gonna to take to solve it, always. You don't start with what data do we have? You don't start with what tools do we have? You start with what is the problem we're trying to solve and work backwards into how you're gonna solve it, right? I would advocate you design things that humans interact with first. And that, that often means the BI layer or the application that's gonna contain the data. You start from that position and work backwards. This is what we call uh, begin with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. is, is the phrase that, that we like to use here at Super Data Brothers. You need to test your hypotheses quickly and with production data. This is a very foreign concept to a lot of BI people in particular. They, they really don't like to test with production data, your BI DW, you need to do it, right? That's, that's the way to be the most suc uh, successful. And then finally, remember the tech problems may be interesting, but they are not the point of what you're doing. Do not get lost in solving the most interesting logic puzzle. Always focus on the ROI. That's the top skill. And if you can Number master one. that, that alone will make you a successful consultant. Yeah, I mean, that'll make you successful no matter what you do, but especially in consulting. <laughs> Absolutely. So I promised the tech skills, here they are. What are, from my perspective and Eric's perspective, the top technical skills in 2023? SQL. Number one. Number one. <laughs> SQL. Always SQL. Always SQL. Uh, Always equal. You know, there was a while a couple of years ago, like when MongoDB first exploded, where I know a lot of people oh, yeah. were like, oh, are we going to even use SQL in the future? Yeah. Like everything. Mo Mo MongoDB pipelines and MapReduce. And yeah, I mean, I did some of that stuff then too. Sure. You know? We all did. Um, but it always comes back to SQL. In fact, SQL's had this kind of explosion of, of increased value over the last few years. Um, I would say get your data stacks squared away. What does that mean? That just means understand. When people talk about a data stack, they say the modern data stack, for example. Well, what does that mean, right? It's a mm -hmm. series of tools. They interact with one another in a particular way. Learn it. Just uh, overall understand what it is and why people need it. Engineering. A cloud ELT plus DBT plus Snowflake. That is what I would learn today. You pick your flavor of, of ELT. It's really DBT is the T, right? So it's EL plus DBT plus mm -hmm. Snowflake. Um, I would, that, I would just fundamentally learn that. Semantic layers and catalogs. I, I'm not gonna provide tool recommendations for you as to which semantic layer or catalog to learn, but these are hot topics. You need to become versed in them so that when they come up, you know what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, the BI piece. Eric, what BI tools should people learn? Power BI. They should learn Power BI. Right. right. Um, it's, is that right because it's, it's our favorite tool or we think it's the best tool? No, and I don't think I think it's I don't think it's the best tool. I think it's I personally I think it's a little um, a little janky and like the the way you have to think about things is like in a more linear kind of Excel way, less of a more like thinking of data big picture way. But you know, uh, Power BI is eating every, everyone's lunch right now, and you know, learn Power BI. It, it can't hurt to learn Power BI. Now maybe you don't only learn Power BI because I've seen people who learn Power BI then they, they have a Hard, hard. They get locked into Power BI, and they have a harder time understanding um, other BI tools or just greater like data concepts. So learn more than one tool, but no, at least know Power BI enough. Right? Yep, that's where I would start, right? And then um, uh, I, I also throw on here notebooks. I mean, there's interesting stuff happening in the BI space that I think has yet to totally permeate the consciousness of our industry. And this is one of those uh, one of those topics is BI notebooks. There's a number of them out there. I'm a big favor of Count, which is really not even a notebook. It's like a, it's hard to describe. It's a real time collaborative data canvas. It's an awesome tool. But I would say, you know, the notebook or data canvas uh, would be something that I would I would look into as well. Now DevOps and slash data ops. This is a different way of doing things. This is basically software engineering. Uh, coming to the analytics layer. I would learn these techniques and practices. Um, Marco says, aren't R or Python also required? Yeah, I, I, they should probably be on the list. That's a good, uh, good point, good. Marco. I would say um, I would choose Python between I the two. I would choose Python as well. 
Yeah, because uh-huh. Python is going to allow you to do when you combine Python with this DevOps data ops piece, that's really going to allow you to do a lot of uh, the Python allows you to do DevOps and data ops in, in a way that like R is strictly for kind of that um, the, the, statistical the analysis. Analysis, analysis. And, it, and it's, it's good at it, and a lot of people use it, and it's great. But if you learn Python, Python the, the scripting language opens up a whole world of other things. So if you're just getting in, I'd say learn Python. Right, right. And then the last thing I would say um, is chat GPT. Hmm. Mm-hmm. What do we think of that, Eric? I th- Well, I think you know, people think it's, some people are saying it's gloom and doom for their jobs. You know, people aren't <laughs> going to be, you know, what am I going to do? It's going to be able to write code. But if you're going to be a consultant, you're valued for your knowledge and your ability to execute, right? And chat GPT only helps you, right? You can't say, you can't give ChatGPT a business problem and have it spit out the code that will solve it or the business process that will solve it. You, as the as the thought worker, as the consultant, has to do that. So G- ChatGPT actually helps you. It makes it easier because you have the business knowledge. You have the personal relationships and the people skills to think of the bigger picture. ChatGPT can only help you make the code to make it happen. Right. At first, I was skeptical. Then I started using it in some of my personal scripting. It hasn't hindered me at all. It's like I understand the concepts as good as I did before. But now, like instead of spending twenty minutes trying to figure out some, you know, trying to select the grandfather of this in some HTML document or whatever you may be doing, you ask ChatGPT. It gives you something that's correct enough in your the narrow question you asked it, and you incorporate it into your bigger business project and big, big bigger business solution. I think ChatGPT is. If you don't start using ChatGPT or like some large language model, whatever someone else comes out with, like you will be left behind in a degree because using it, you'll be able to do stuff in an hour that would normally take you four or more, depending, yeah. right? And you're, you're valued for the thoughts, not necessarily for actually just spending time writing code. Exactly. Especially once you make the move into consulting, right? It's the yep. thoughts more than the writing code that you're valued for. Now, um mm-hmm. Uh, Bill uh, Alberto Vicente says in the comments, you know, if your data foundation is garbage in, garbage out, your chat GPT solution will be crap. 100%. Okay. I, I honestly think that um, where chat GPT is most useful in the immediate future is as a force multiplier for an individual, right? Yes. So like you yourself are doing work. You already have expertise. Yeah. I find that you need a level of expertise in order to input the prompts to the large language model in order to get anything useful out of it. So it cannot replace your expertise at all at this point. Nope. And definitely if you're using GPT as like a query tool, it is 100% garbage in, garbage out. But as an individual, it's kind of a force multiplier for your expertise. Oh yeah, I I don't see like ChatGPT answering questions directly right now because you can't trust them. But you are an expert and you sit in between and you're using the tool. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's where I would use it in uh, in 2023. 